So, in this way, uh, getting through the Guru Yoga practice, like uh, through one's body, speech, mind, uh, in a way that uh, we need to have relax and then uh, with devotion get it through the practice. So then, uh, relating with this Guru Yoga practice, as explained yesterday, visualizing above your head uh, in the space, uh, the Guru Pamasambhava, who is the essence, is the one's root Guru. And then uh, that uh, thinking that it is like uh, just really, uh, really uh, there in, uh, above your head and visualizing in that way and then cultivate the devotion and then uh, one can do the Guru Yoga practice. <laughs> So that will be the support of that uh, where one can just uh, offer all these kind of you know, offerings and uh, doing the supplication prayers and at the same time it is the just uh, uh, object through which uh, one can uh, get rid of all these you know, obstacles. <laughs> So whether it is worldly activity or just a uh, um, transcendent uh, uh, activity, uh, however, if one just sincerely supplicate in that way, then uh, one can receive that blessing. And even when we are just sleeping, then that uh, Lama, the Guru, which you visualize above your head, that melt into light and dissolve into yourself in the, in the heart, and just uh, visualizing that it is there with the just radiating of light, and then do short uh, prayer, and then one can just go to sleep. So in general, this in this world, our mind is just always lots and lots of conceptual thoughts, and because of that, it also does create lots of uh, mental uh, negative karmas. And when we are doing the Dharma practice, then we always try to just uh, control or just uh, have less afflicted mind. So even if we just visualize the Guru above one's head, and then, you know, concentrating one's mind there, that helps that one's mind not get uh, detracted. And even just we are sleeping, then the Guru just uh, visualizing in your heart and then inseparable with your nature of mind, and then uh, just from the Lama's, uh, the Guru's uh, body, radiating the light and filled up your whole body in that way and uh, concentrating your mind there, it also helps uh, not to distract your mind. So in general, whatever that uh, Dharma practices we may do, uh, just uh, supplicating to Lama, that will be just uh, uh, enough. 
And even just we carry through practice of a, the meditational deity, uh, still we have to just understand that a meditational deity is inseparable with the one root guru. And even we do all the offerings to the Dharma protector, it is also a just display of the, just, uh, the guru. And ultimately, when we realize the just great perfection, the Dzogchen, then that the master's uh, body, speech, mind, and one's body, mind, that uh, in a way that which is uh, become non-dual, and that uh, the uh, uh, great compassion and the omniscient mind of the guru, and then once you know Buddha nature, that uh, there is no any separation; it becomes just non-dual and one. But still, you know, until and unless we could have that recognition of the absolute true nature of mind, you know, uh, till to that, still, it is just uh, uh, normally, uh, normally just, you know, to understand. So whatever kind of practices we do is mainly to how we could recognize the intrinsic nature, nature of the just uh, mind. And also that, uh, you know, during all the teachings, it uh, explained about that uh, the all sentient being just uh, equal to the space, you know, to th think of, to benefit them. And that way, uh, one should not forget the bodhicitta. So then, uh, as we are receiving the both of the vow every morning and practicing about that, so during the uh, four foundation practice, when there is the teaching for bodhicitta, then uh, hopefully we have enough time that uh, uh, thinking to give you the both of the vow uh, going through the actual ceremony. In general, that uh, since we are just going through the ceremony of Bodhisattva vow, which we are receiving every morning, we are actually receiving, and uh, although it is not necessary to do separately. So if we don't have the bodhicitta, the awakened mind, then uh, there is no any other path to attain enlightenment. So in this way, that although that uh, to have the absolute bodhicitta may be difficult, but uh, of course we can generate the relative bodhicitta. So we uh, we always need to generate that. So that uh, with a kind of selfish intention, uh, getting through the you know dharma practice, one cannot really get much benefit. And we all are from beginningless lifetime that they always concentrating on self benefit, and that is how we are just still here. So even if we think properly, like a, even a tiny insect, they are also just kind of concentrating for their, you know, self-benefit. There is no any single sentient being who wish to suffer oneself. 
So that being selfish, uh, it is uh, always difficult one to have a you know pure dharma practice. So it is uh, important that one have to generate bodhicitta to benefit you know all sentient beings, and that it also has to be equanimity or you know just uh, without any partiality and uh, mainly to start the actual practice of the bodhicitta you know starting with one's you know present mother and then through that we can just extend until to all sentient beings uh, there are also some people who could just say, oh, I can generate, you know, bodhicitta to all other sentient beings except one person who is just always, you know, creating lots of problems to me. So if one thinks in that way, still it is not a perfect bodhicitta. And some people say that, you know, there is no way I can generate, you know, just a bodhicitta to my, you know, mother. I really don't like her and uh, other, you know, sending me, uh, may be possible, I can generate bodhicitta. So the, when we carry through the actual bodhicitta practice, then in first in a way we can start with the, you know, our present you know, mother and the parent and then in, through that we can just slowly think of all other sentient beings. Mm. And then uh, as we carry through the practice, then uh, every time we need to do that kind of dedication. And uh, when we are just uh, carrying the, uh, getting, uh, when we are chanting the dedication prayers, then one have to think, you know, you are dedicating. And even not then, you know, anytime whenever you do practice, you need to dedicate the merit to all beings. So if uh, the, whatever the um, Dharma practice we do and that kind of accumulation of merit, if we don't dedicate, then, you know, we are, uh, as an ordinary descendant being, have all this kind of afflicted mind. Anytime we give rise to, you know, strong anger, then that will just exhaust all those merit. So, uh, whenever we are doing practice, you know, just uh, uh, in a, you know, uh, right period of time, it is, it is important to dedicate all those merit to all beings. So even like a, that a, uh, but accumulation of merit through all these practices that which we have accumulated for even like a thousand years, but uh, when we just give rise to a very strong anger, then all those merits can be just, you know, got exhausted by that anger. So, so if we dedicate, then uh, that cannot be just destroyed. So the accumulation merit or the virtuous deed, not necessarily it has to be big or small, but uh, even we just you know offer one single incense 
and uh, one can do dedication of that. And even we offer, you know, one single flower, we can do dedication of that. Even we accumulate, like, even we chant, you know, one single mantra, and that, you know, the merit which we can just, you know, dedicate to all sentient beings. Sanjee even that uh, there is a story relating with the Shakyamuni Buddha in his uh, previous lifetime when he is just only an ordinary, uh, ordinary person and uh, he was a cowboy uh, looking after the cows. And then uh, one time they see Kashyap Buddha, that the third Buddha just uh, came across uh, that uh, place. And then instantly that uh, this uh, young cowboy just uh, really felt so much devotion. and three fall into the Buddha's, you know, begging ball. And just because of that, you know, that in the next life, uh, he was born as a, just a Chakravarti, which means who is the ruler of the four continents, and one could just have the same equal seat with the king of the god, you know, Indra. And that kind of just, you know, benefit or result that he could get through just only, you know, offering the seven uh, pieces of being, and uh, mainly based on that, uh, you know, one's intention, that the, uh, the devotion and motivation, because of that one could have great deal of result uh, that achieved in the next lifetime. So in this way, one need to have a very stabilized mind and uh, not creating many, many thoughts and concepts. And then, you know, just if one do, uh, sure, one can have some, you know, benefit. Even this worldly activity, worldly uh, works, that uh, if we just have so many concepts, then uh, we cannot get success in. So, especially for the actual Dharma practice, then the uh, most important is that uh, how we can tame our mind and how we can just uh, purify our mind. Uh, so that's why it is always important that to look into yourself and your mind and watch your mind and then, you know, through that day, you just uh, carry through the practice. So that just thinking, that uh, as we uh, as we examine our just uh, mind, and then constantly giving rise to all this kind of afflicted mind, and then just saying to it, you know, that you being getting afflicted in that way from beginning last time till now, I'm just wandering in the samsara and you know experiencing all this kind of suffering, and still you know if you give rise to uh, this way, then again you know countless uh, lifetimes and endlessly I'm wandering in this um, uh, in this samsara and. In that way, you just uh, need to find it out your fault. 
And then uh, sometimes when you give rise to devotion or inclination, uh, some positive you know, thoughts, and then uh, you know that uh, you think, oh, this is just the blessing of all the Buddhas and you know gurus and uh, so forth, and uh, you know I'm just doing something better, and in that way you need to have just joy over that and try to increase and develop that practice. So in this way, uh, don't create so many thoughts and uh, always, you know, try to turn your mind towards the Dharma practice and then, you know, carry through it. So although it is difficult to control all this afflicted mind, but uh, if, if we if we just you know train in that way that uh, uh, there no, that there is a way we can just you know get uh, well trained in it. <coughs> and then uh, the way of the practice you do that uh, you know one have to be uh, very moderate moderate that uh, not just thinking you know within you know few days you know just to have some kind of realization and then you know putting so uh, putting so much effort and you know working very hard and then you know after some time again just you know losing one should not do in that way just try to be very moderate so uh, one time, uh, one, uh, one foreigner who just uh, came to see Chaturambache and then he brought a Gurumbache, a very nice Gurumbache statue. So then he asked uh, Chaturambache to bless it, you know, consecrate, and then he just uh, took that statue to his place, and then, you know, he started just doing lots of prostration. And he did uh, so much prostration and just, you know, putting himself, you know, just pushing himself to do these, you know, prostration until he had wounds on his knees. And uh, at the same time, and uh, even though he's doing this much kind of, you know, practice, and he even didn't have a nice dream and no any signs. And then uh, he became just angry with the Guru Mujay statue and he brought back to Chaturambache and said, I don't like this, you know, you can just take it back, you know, I'm not going to do practice anymore. And uh, in that way, just kind of like a, you know, in a very short period of time, thinking just to have something, you know, kind of realization, it is, uh, there is no way one can get actualized with the Dharma practice. And for example, like uh, the, according to the uh, Pratimoksha practice, like uh, individual liberation, that uh, in the sutra one have to carry through practice for you know three countless eon lifetimes. And even for the just you know outer tantras like uh, kriya and yoga, yoga uh, charya, these uh, you know takes even like uh, sixteen lifetimes or seven lifetimes. Uh, this even present, you know, the Dokchen, the Great Perfection practice is uh, explained as, you know, one lifetime, you know, realization. And uh, the highest level of mind 
that uh, getting through this uh, great perfection practice, you know, the best level of mind you know, one could have some realization within three years or six years or 12 years, and then if not, then, you know, whole lifetime. Mm. So this is the, you know, the most uh, swiftest uh, path to attain enlightenment. So we are in somehow that uh, just been obscured by all these kind of obscurations and the afflicted mind. You know, it is, uh, uh, it is not uh, easy that immediately one could have some kind of, you know, realization. Just uh, about uh, like, you know, month or just uh, or two or three years, you know, practice and just having that kind of liberation may be a little bit difficult. And uh, that uh, not uh, having this liberation is just because of the, you know, karmic or negative karmic obscuration. So this, uh, all these negative uh, actions is that what we have accumulated is not like, you know, one, uh, one eon or two eon. It is like, you know, countless, countless eon lifetimes we have just uh, uh, accumulated. So that much uh, kind of, you know, obscuration we have. And uh, so, but uh, uh, although it is difficult to get purified, you know, very fast, but at the same time, not necessarily we have to lose our courage that thinking, oh, I cannot just really do it. So as it is uh, taught in these, you know, sutras that uh, with the, you know, devotion and inclination and having that pure perception and then getting through the practice in accordance with the, you know, Dharma teaching, you know, sure we can have some result. <laughs> So even just uh, as we do a lit little bit of practice and we have, you know, some, uh, dr uh, some good dreams or something happens, then one gets so excited, you know, oh, I'm just getting better. And when one gets uh, so excited for certain kind of things, then that is also an obstacle for the Dharma. And even we have good signs, you know, one just uh, think, oh, this is just a blessing of the, you know, triple gems and the kindness of the Guru. And in that way, still one have to continue to do the practice. And even we have bad signs, also we have to understand, oh, this is because of my, you know, negative karma and still, you know, doing supplication to triple gym, just, you know, to help, uh, to get it through the Dharma practice. So the main, uh, main um, practice is that uh, uh, to realize the self-arising uh, intrinsic awareness. Uh, that one could have that kind of, you know, recognition. Yeah, I have to say that. So today, just, you know, we have some rainfall, so maybe you have a little bit problems. And now the wonder is students. You just uh, go somewhere where there is no rainfall and carry through your practice. And then the Talong practitioners, if that uh, tent uh, helps you to protect from the rain, you can just carry through your practice. 
And in general, you know, whatever problems may happen during your practice, one should not think that uh, this is uh, just, you know, problem. One have to think that this is just uh, really purifying one's, you know, uh, you know these uh, negative karmas. Even that uh, you have any kind of, you know, pain or sickness in your body, uh, still, uh, you know, it is important to think, or oh, this may just, you know, be ben beneficial to all the, you know, sentient beings. If we think in this way, then, you know, it is that uh, how, you know, that uh, we are doing the purification and also that uh, benefits for oneself. And uh, otherwise, otherwise just thinking, oh, I'm just feeling sick, you know, I'm difficulty, or this I cannot do, and if you concentrate in that way, and there is no any benefit at all. And when one self experiencing this, then you know, thinking like uh, this may just uh, be uh, beneficial for all the sentient beings, or even this uh, difficulty, you know, this uh, uh, also just be become meaningful, and in that way one have to just you know think. So, in general, that uh, if uh, somebody who understands the Dharma and been explained in this way, uh, maybe it is good to, because there is a way to understand. But otherwise, someone who does not understand anything about Dharma and explain in that way for just a you know, sick person, maybe it is kind of like a difficult to you know, uh, accept. So, so somebody is just, you know, sick and then just saying, oh, you know, you, you know this is good for you, you know, just being, you know, beneficial for all sentient beings, maybe that, you know, feel just more upset. If one knows or understands and if one can really think in that way, it is also very powerful. Okay, then it's done. There is Doja inside. Then she number persons. Yeah, so today that uh, the Tokchen students, they are receiving the teaching. So rest all, you can just leave. <laughs>